Plate Motion Engineering Internship, Day 3, Researching Plate Motion in Tsunamis. A reminder that you can access your digital resources in the lesson brief of every lesson. Even though the activities are available in Amplify Lessons, you will be working in the Futura Workspace. You can find the Futura Workspace in your Amplify main menu. In this lesson, we gather, analyze, and apply evidence from the digital model and the dossier about the patterns of landforms that occur at different plate boundaries, showing patterns, and whether earthquakes at those plate boundaries are capable of causing tsunamis, a cause and effect. Activity 1. Connecting to Futura Workspace. Each day, you'll add to your daily message notes. You'll start by pinning the message using the pin icon in the top right corner of the message. Then, you'll open your daily message notes document in your inbox and create a new header with today's date and message topic. Students, open Futura Workspace and read the daily message from the project director. Remember that the new message, titled Day 3, Plate Boundary Types, should be at the top of the inbox and that you should pin the message. Add notes to the top of your existing daily message notes with the new heading Day 3 Plate Boundary Types. All of the notes you take for this message should fall under this heading. Ensure that you are clear on your task for the day, annotating the map of the Indian Ocean region. Introducing Scientific Communication Scientific Communication The process of sharing scientific arguments, explanations, ideas, or data with an audience. Hannah Wong, your project director, has sent a new video message. The video provides some tips on scientific communication. Students, play the video. Are there any questions or comments about Hannah's video message? Scientists and engineers often have to work on their research projects. Communicating effectively helps them collaborate more easily to solve tough problems. Throughout this internship, you will be conducting research and sharing your research with your colleagues. It is important that you use scientific communication so that everyone has the information they need to begin designing their tsunami warning systems. Researching plate boundaries. What have you learned about plate motion and tsunamis so far? Reviewing what you learned about plate motion and tsunamis in the previous days, note the following points that you will be focusing on today. A tsunami is a large destructive ocean wave, primarily caused by a sudden shift in the seafloor that moves a large amount of water. Tsunamis can cause lots of damage to places on land. Earthquakes are due to movement along the three types of plate boundaries, convergent, divergent, and transform. Plate boundaries that result in vertical motion of the sea floor can cause tsunamis, and convergent boundaries are the most likely to produce this type of motion. Each plate boundary type can cause earthquake activity and may be associated with a specific landform. Hannah wants you to apply this knowledge to the region so you can design a better warning system to alert the people of Sri Lanka of a tsunami. Let's locate the region on a world map. Students, orient to the Indian Ocean region relative to other continents. Note key places on the map, especially Sri Lanka, in the Indian Ocean region inset. As you research today, you will keep this focus question in mind. What information will help you answer the focus question? Which areas are most likely to have earthquakes that cause tsunamis? You might respond, where the plate boundaries are. Which type of plate boundaries are? Where large magnitude earthquakes are likely to occur? For this part of your research, you'll focus on determining the types and locations of the plate boundaries in the Indian Ocean region. You will use Chapter 3 as a resource. You will also use the design tool as a resource later in the workday. This map shows the Indian Ocean region. You'll work in partners and use Chapter 3 to mark up the map as you discuss evidence for the places to record the plate boundaries. Chapter 3 shows images of different landforms associated with plate boundary types. These will help you think about where to mark the plate boundaries on your map. The Tsunami Threat Map is another useful resource in Chapter 3. Notice that the Indian Ocean region is in this part of the threat map. You and your partner will use this shared map for recording your first ideas together. Later, you'll receive another map to record your final research. Students, view the map of the Indian Ocean region sheet. Complete the key on your map by drawing a line next to each boundary type. Make each line a different color. Students, review the key for plate boundary types and complete the key. It is recommended to use the following colors. Yellow for convergent, red for divergent, and green for transform. 
you can ignore the earthquake key for this portion of the research. Reread Chapter 3, thinking about where you will mark the locations and types of plate boundaries in the Indian Ocean. Students, begin your dossier research. You can open the dossier using the link in the daily message. Look carefully at the Tsunami Threat Zones map and the diagrams and images of different landforms associated with each plate boundary type. Discuss where different types of plate boundaries are in the Indian Ocean region and mark the boundaries in different colors on your map. Now you and your partner will join another pair to discuss the locations and types of boundaries you marked on your maps. Predict where you expect to see earthquakes. Discuss whether any tsunamis could be generated at each boundary. How did you use scientific communication to discuss the plate boundary locations? How did you research to answer the focus question, which areas are most likely to have earthquakes that cause tsunamis? You might respond, we looked for clues on where the plate boundaries are and which types they are based on the landforms. Next, we'll discuss each plate boundary type as a class. Let's share our first ideas about where one appears in the Indian Ocean region. Convergent plate boundary. The two landforms associated with this plate boundary type are trenches and mountains. Trenches look like dark bands along the seafloor, and mountains on the land masses are noted by changes in elevation. What are your first ideas about where the convergent boundaries are in the Indian Ocean region? Divergent plate boundary. This landform associated with this plate boundary type is a mid-ocean ridge. In this image, the mid-ocean ridge looks like a rough region with a crack running down the middle. What are your first ideas about where the divergent boundaries are in the Indian Ocean region? Transform plate boundary. No notable landforms. There are no notable landforms associated with transform plate boundaries. How would you know where these plate boundaries occur? You might respond, earthquake activity, especially ones that don't cause tsunamis. At this point, do we have enough information to determine where tsunamis will occur in the Indian Ocean? You might respond, no, landforms alone are only evidence for plate boundaries, but they're not always enough. It can be misleading if you interpret the landform incorrectly. We think earthquakes that cause tsunamis will occur where there are trenches indicating a convergent boundary and in a place where plates can shift a large amount of water because the boundary is in the ocean. We won't see tsunamis from earthquakes along the mountains north of India. It can be very challenging to interpret these maps and landforms, and your final maps do not need to be perfect. Remember, there's another source of evidence that Hannah wanted you to use, the Tsunami Alert Design Tool. Investigating Earthquakes with Tsunami Alert Tsunami Alert can help you predict where earthquakes and tsunamis are most likely to occur over a 50-year period based on historical data. You know that earthquakes and tsunamis are unpredictable events. You can't predict exactly where or when they will happen. However, you can use the locations of the plate boundaries and data from past quakes and tsunamis to help you think about where they are most likely to occur in the future. For this part of your research, you will each use your own map to record earthquake and tsunami locations as you run tests and tsunami alert. Students, view the map of the Indian Ocean region sheet. You can move the slider to reveal the landforms in tsunami alert. Based on these landforms you see, where do you predict earthquakes and tsunamis will happen if we run a test? Now the map matches the version you have on your printed maps, except the printed version is black and white and has more labels. Let's run a sample test together. Students, play the video. Which type of plate boundary is likely to be near this earthquake since it caused a tsunami? You might respond, convergent. Remember, trenches and mountains are the landforms that are associated with a convergent boundary. Some earthquakes only cause local tsunamis that don't travel far enough to hit Sri Lanka. Other earthquakes cause ocean-wide tsunamis. As you record earthquakes on your map, you'll draw different symbols to show which ones are caused local tsunamis and which ones cause ocean-wide tsunamis. You can use the coordinates from Tsunami Alert to help you place a symbol for each earthquake inside the matching area of the grid on your map. You will now record the earthquake data directly on your personal copies of the map of the Indian Ocean region for final reference. You can use any colored pencil or a pen to mark the earthquakes, as long as the marks are easily visible on the map. You do not have to record the locations precisely. Investigating earthquakes with Tsunami Alert. Reveal landforms. Move the landform slider all the way to the right. 
Do not place any sensors. Conduct earthquake test. Select test and observe where earthquakes appear. Study earthquakes. Select study earthquakes. Press the button for each earthquake to find out if it created a tsunami. Record on your map. Find the area on your map that corresponds to each earthquake and draw a symbol showing what happened. Students, navigate to Tsunami Alert and study the earthquakes. Use the Design Tool button in the upper right corner of the Futura Workspace tab. Finish recording your earthquake and tsunami data. Next, you'll discuss and compare your first idea's maps and your individual maps. You'll look for patterns to help you finalize your plate boundaries. Now that you have additional evidence, you can revise the boundary types and locations and transfer those to your individual maps. Scientists and engineers often compare and discuss their research because that can help them identify any patterns in their research and data. A pattern is something we observe to be similar over and over again. Patterns are everywhere, from weather patterns and seasonal cycles to life cycles of organisms. Noticing patterns is often the first step in learning about new science and engineering concepts. Learning about the patterns involved with plate boundaries and earthquake and tsunami locations can help scientists and engineers prepare for future tsunamis. As you compare your research, note any patterns for this region. Discussion Tsunami Alert Research Step 1. Compare the earthquakes and tsunamis observed. Step 2. Finalize the locations and types of plate boundaries. Step 3. Note any patterns in the map or data. Step 4. Discuss which areas will likely have earthquakes that cause a tsunami that can reach Sri Lanka. Students, complete the map annotations. Let's discuss your map research and how it helped you learn more about the plate boundary locations. Did all of you see earthquakes in exactly the same locations? How did studying the earthquake and tsunami locations help you figure out the locations of the plate boundaries more accurately? How did you use scientific communication to discuss the earthquakes, tsunamis, and plate boundary locations? What other patterns did you notice? You might respond, no, because earthquakes are unpredictable, but we saw that they were in similar locations. We saw tsunamis only happen near trenches, which confirms a convergent boundary. We found evidence for a plate boundary that had no obvious landforms, so we concluded it was a transform boundary. We needed to use the map coordinates to discuss where earthquakes occurred. Using cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west, and geographical locations helped us discuss the map more precisely. You might note that all local tsunamis have magnitude between 7.0 and 7.9. All ocean-wide tsunamis are 8.0 or greater. And no tsunamis occur along any transform or divergent plate boundaries, and never less than a 7.0 magnitude. Tsunami Alert showed a pattern of where ocean-wide tsunamis occurred. This might give you clues about where to place sensors for your tsunami warning system. Remember, you're trying to maximize the average warning time for Sri Lanka. Activity 2, After Hours Work After hours, you'll return to your daily message notes to see if you have any unfinished tasks. Students, check your notes for the after hours work. End of Day 3